Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm John Lawless, Director of Percussion Studies here at Kennesaw State University. That's the stage that I'm standing on. Uh, I'm here to help you with your all-state etudes for 2018-2019. This is the high school 11 and 12. So what I've done is I've put together videos of the mallet etude, timpani etude, and the snare drum etude. And I play through them so you can see what I've done with those dynamically and stickings, etc. And then at the end of that, we'll put them on the screen and you can actually look at the etude while we talk about some specific points, uh, stickings or dynamics or speeds of the rolls or roll meters, things like that. So hopefully this is helpful for you. Uh, Doug Lindsay had the idea here to help everybody with videos uh, for the Allstate A2s, and I think it's a brilliant idea. So hopefully this will help you. I've enjoyed preparing them, and I wish you all the best for your Allstate audition. Okay, let's talk about the timpani etude. This is actually kind of fun. The first choice you have to make is where you're going to place the notes. And you have options. Um, you know, you, you, you could place the notes, the D flat on your 26 inch drum and the A flat on your 29 inch drum. Another option for most of us would be to put the D flat on your 29 inch drum and your A flat on your large drum or your 32. That's actually what I would choose if I were doing this in an orchestral environment. I like my drums at a little tighter, uh, tighter spot um, as far as the notes instead of a lower spot. Uh, you could put the D flat on the 23, however it's horrific, don't do that. I think your best choice is what I did for the video and that would be to put the notes on the 26 and 29. And that's that. Sticks, you wanna use a general stick, something that gives you um, uh, articulation, not too much. Um, a nice sound on your rolls. If it's a super hard stick, it's not going to be good for your rolls. It'd be great on the articulations and vice versa. If you have a super soft stick, all your articulations are gone. So you need to be have a more articulate general stick for sure on this. Rhythms be very concise. The uh, dotted 16th, 32nd. Let's talk the first bar. Di, da, ga, da, gi, da. Gada, gada. Very, very meticulous on that. Da, gada, gada. Subdivided in your head. Da, 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 da. Uh, a lot of you are used to playing dotted 8 16th. This is faster than that. It's kind of that idea, but you've got to subdivide it. It's only 72 to the quarter note, so it's not blazing fast. Da, 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 da. Really, really, really do that. And they put triplets after that. So if you're tripletizing, da, 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 da. Digga, 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 digga. So that's not what you want. You want da, 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 da. Digga, 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 da. That rhythm. Muffles. When the dots are on the notes here, the intent is to muffle, I'm sure. Usually there are dots and rest following. So do work out your uh, logistics with getting your hands on and off the drums. Um, you'll see that on the video. Uh, so there are some definite spots. There's one that's a little nebulous. Uh, in the first section, bar four, if you look there with me, you have a roll and then a rest, two tight eighth notes, and then a dot on that eighth note. Hmm. So I take that as a normal roll, muffle, play your next note, the tight eighth notes, and then play that next eighth note with the dot and mute it. Ba -um, and then you have a clean dig da dig da da So for the next bar in bar five. Uh, again, only roll as fast as you need. 
you get away with a little bit slower roll on an A-flat, especially if it's on a 29-inch drum. Uh, and you have a double forte fermata in bar seven, just before the andantino section. So really, really go for that one. Again, as fast as you need. Not so loud that you know, you're, you're hurting the instruments, obviously, but that's double forte. That's your loudest part of the entire piece, just so you know. Okay, the andantino. Mezzo piano. I suggest this, and this is not from me. You know, we're all a product of everything we've ever experienced. Um, several of my teachers have said when you're playing articulations, a um, little bit more of your middle finger. You know, timpani is all about touch and tone and getting the best sound you can get, and all your play spots will tell you that. The drum will tell you where it likes to be played and all of that. I'm sure you're probably fine with, with all of that. And watch the video to see where I play on these drums. That'd be a good indication there. On these rhythms, really, really articulate, and hopefully your sticks will allow you to do so. But a little more middle finger, as if, as if a brass player is going, you got dig it up. So that will help there. Stickings, now, if you look back at my video on this, I do a couple of kind of weird stickings, and I, and I literally worked on this to work out my stickings. I played many different ways. I typically like to alternate. I just don't like to use double stickings. And the more I worked on this piece, I'm like, okay, John, give in. So in bar 16, I go left, right, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, right. And I've tried that six different ways. That's what I ended out with, and it worked okay. If I were recording it, well, I did, didn't I? Uh, if I were really recording it uh, for something important, I would probably do that sticking. It's less risky than moving everything you have uh, from one drum to the next in, in a pretty quick motion. Uh, the next line down, so I'm looking at uh, specifically bar 18 now. My sticking there, and again, all of my stickings um, are set up on, I should have said this at the beginning, you're probably like, what are you doing, John? Uh, I play German style timpani. The low drum is on the right. If you're like, well, then your video is not helpful at all. Watch it and mirror it, and that's your sticking if you're an American player. Uh, so my sticking on this uh, bar 18, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. That's the entire bar. So left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And that worked pretty fine. I tried that one just alternating and moving, and it was just you get tongue tied, your sticks hit each other, you have collisions, you can work it until you're blue in the face. If you put a couple doubles in, you'll save your own life there. Um, so hopefully that works. My other stickings in the entire piece, I just let the drums lead my way. Right, left, 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 right, whatever. Uh, whatever works naturally. Uh, for the forte piano rolls, I would just say hit your forte and keep your piano low below that. Don't worry about that, that technique of hitting a forte, getting out of the way, and then sneaking into the roll. That's how I was raised playing timpani forte piano rolls. It's not necessary, especially on these. You don't have enough time to do that. The luxury of basking in that uh, forte strike and just sneaking in. All these forte pianos in here are pretty brisk. You get out of them quickly. Uh, up in bar 11, if you look at that with me, you have a forte piano on the third big beat of that bar. That stays down. And so don't crescendo that roll. Look at it. Ba, and then ba, 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 da, ba. So you crescendo the eighth notes there at the end. Don't worry about crescendoing that roll. Uh, the last line, however, bar 19, that forte piano, you are going to crescendo the actual roll. Uh, the last bar of the piece, bar 20, dunk, dagga, dagga, dam, muffle. It's going to be kind of a loud muffle. That's okay. You can't sneak a muffle in. Dunk, da 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 muffle, bump, bump. And you'll muffle the A flat there after you strike it, so the D flat is a clean note and a long note. So yeah, bump, bump, and you'll finish that. Okay? That may be about it for the timpani etude. Let me just look at it. Yep, I think that's probably it. So stickings are important. Which drums you're going to use are important. Sticks are incredibly important. Uh, concise rhythms are very, you notice, notice the theme here, it's all important. Work on your touch and your tone, make sure your intonation is right, and find your stickings that work for you. Again, if you're backwards from what I did today, you can reverse that 
look into the screen and there's your sticking if you do that. You're just mirroring what I have. But I play German, low drum to the right. If you play American, it is not a big deal at all, at all. Roll speeds only as fast as necessary. All right? Okay, good luck with that. This is actually a very nice little etude. Okay, let's talk about the mallet etude. It's a little twisty. You've already realized that if you've worked on it for a while, and I hope you have. Um, starts mezzo piano, adhere to that. That's not a super soft start, so that works pretty well. Uh, stickings, uh, with few exceptions, natural sticking, whatever you're good with. If you play mallets, uh, you have a dominant right or left hand, and you can do whatever you like here. I had a natural sticking pretty much. I'm right-handed, I started right, yabba dabba 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 dum, and pretty much adhered to that. Uh, after the fermata, uh, the sextuplets, I would start that run right hand. I did it left for a little while, and I thought, nope, right hand works better for me. So I do that right hand straight on down, end up on that fermata. At the moderato, nothing super weird. It's just, it's just normal sticking. Works fine. Dig a dot, dig a dun, dig a dot, dig a dum. Left hand on the uh, on the on the lower B flats there with the accents, and I think that's what you would do as well. You probably already dealt with that. Um, and here's the dynamics. The little hairpins are important. The fortes are important. The sudden forte in bar 12. But da 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 da. You want to make sure you really hit that so you have somewhere to go. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Roll speeds. My teachers always said, and I teach this as well, roll as fast as necessary. You don't have to like impress the world with how fast you can roll on any of our instruments, especially the melodic instruments. Timpani, as fast as necessary. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, marimba, yep, same thing. If it's a lower note, you don't have to roll blazing fast. It's not a xylophone. However, if you are playing this on a xylophone, maybe you'll roll a little bit faster. <laughs> with the gliss, I attack that with the right hand. And I do the D uh, an octave below with the left hand. B up, and that seems to work okay. As far as the double stops in bar 22, make sure you don't play those too open. Hopefully, I didn't on the uh, video. You'll see that. Doom, bun, duck, duck, duck. Try to make it sound like it's just one note, however, there are two. The tendency is to go blabbity, blabbity, blah. The next bar, the sextuplet, I start that with the right hand and start at forte and run it straight up. That last E flat to E flat, I end up on the right hand and I race down with the left hand to catch that piano E flat uh, ending three notes. And that's actually quite a, kind of tricky. I know you've already experienced that.
Let's talk briefly about the snare drum etude. Roll meters are kind of the most important thing to make your roll smooth. Figure out your meter inside that roll. What I have come up with for the first section that is 76 to the quarter note, I do triplets and that makes the rolls fill in quite nicely. So try that experiment. Put a triplet, uh, 16 note triplets I'm referring to of course, and that led, led great uh, to the first bar. There's your meter for the, for the roll. So try that. Um, for the next section, since we're on rolls, when it goes to quarter note equals 128, I jump to a 16th note metering for my rolls. And that seems to fill that out nicely too. And then you're set up at the beginning as well. Da, da, di, yaga, cha, di. So you're, you're there. See if that works for you as far as a roll meter. If not, find your own. All you're trying to do is have enough um, homogenous sound so that the, the, it sounds like a, a whole, you know, just a long note. Like anybody else in the orchestra would play a long note. This is the way we can play our long notes with the roll. So you have to find something that works the best for your inside meter. It's a whole, it's a whole scientific <laughs> equation, if you will. But for me with this, uh, 76, I used 16 note triplets, 128 sixteenth notes inside my rolls. Uh, up at the very top of the page, little asterisk there, all rolls and roughs be played closed. That's actually nice that they give you that. Otherwise, people will come in and they'll do uh, whatever they feel like doing. This defines it for us. So you'll notice on the video, I played all my roughs very tight. Not how I normally play them, by the way, but you play the game. When they ask you to do one thing, that's what you do. So I play my roughs uh, tight on this as requested, as well the rolls quite closed, not, not like an open concert roll, quite closed. Um, here's a big point. Accent only things that are accented, i.e. bar two. We have B da da cha. That flam right there is not an accent. We normally play accents on all of our flams. It's just how we're weaned. I mean, it's just accents and flams go hand in hand. Concert drumming, you have to be very, very meticulous. There's no accent there. Do not accent it. The next bar, however, those are accented. Have it. Have fun with those. Go get them. Uh, there is a misprint, and I'm sorry to say this. Now, maybe my page, the dot blew off. I don't know. <clears throat> Please look down at measure 21. You have that rough on, on the end that starts that bar. And if you play this as is, you're missing one sixteenth note to make it work into your timing. So what I think needs to happen is the second rough needs to have a dot on it. So it would then be prat, 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 da, 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 da. That's all I can figure that it needed to be. It's just missing a dot, you guys. So put the dot there and you'll play it correctly. One, uh, uh. Uh, da, 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 da. That makes enough beats in the bar. Okay, enough said about that. The next bar is important because, and I didn't even do this when I started working on this at first, bar 22, you have a roll going to a roll that's kind of an off 16th, and then there is not a tie going to the next bar. So don't allow yourself to just tie that straight into dig the cha. So what you want to go is ba da ka di dig the cha. This little, little pause between that roll, bar 22 and bar 23. I asked my teacher, Jack Bell, when I was really, really young, well, how much pause should you put there? He goes, you know, just a little bit. <laughs> it's undefined. Uh, it's as if any other musician on, on the stage is playing that figure. They take a bassoon player. They would go, B, da, da, di, da, 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 di, da, da, di, da, da, da. There's that pause, and it's there. So don't roll straight into the next bar. If you do it that way, you're playing it correct. It is as written. Okay, uh, dynamics are important. So when they're forte, do the fortes. When they're forte with accents, they should be more. So the last bar, you got the entire range. And that is just all you've got right there. Nice big ending on this piece. This was actually a, a, an enjoyable etude as well. It's good for your hands. It's not too twisty and turny. So I think you'll probably have a great time with this if you, if you enjoy playing snare drum. Uh, so good luck with that. Hope the video helps. I wish you all the best.